Well, uh, like I said, I mean, this is based on data that we get from many different agencies. And uh, we are expecting a good agricultural uh, harvest. We are seeing increased movement in e-commerce. I think the whole e-commerce movement post-COVID, as I mentioned, has increased substantially. And so for this, the movement is very much desired by these smaller vehicles within the cities. And, um, sorry, what was your other question? You said the... I showed you an LCB performance. Well, uh, the market growth is 8 to 10%. Our endeavor definitely is to increase our market share, so we will be growing faster than that. Well, you know, the, uh, the commodity prices have softened, and we saw this softening as a result of the government-imposed 15% uh, export tax that came in. Uh, I would not like to, let's say, second-guess in terms of what we would be doing. But depending on how the market goes, of course, we will do any corrections that are necessary. But I think it's still a little too early to take a call on this. Roger. Uh, in fact, uh, we've not been uh, passing the material increase to the market. Uh, it's a very sensitive uh, market, price sensitive market. Hence, uh, it is very difficult to comment exactly what will be our strategy. And second thing is this uh, price easing, uh, though material price has eased out, but actually, you know, there is an inventory which we have to consume. So, uh, you will see the actual impact in Q4. Yeah, so uh, if you see, we had platform, those platform, which is uh, a little bit in uh, lower uh, range of uh, pricing, but bada those uh, being uh, customer-centric product, uh, we have given uh, unique uh, propositions to customer, and the positioning of this will be entire two to three and a half ton segment. So uh, I one will be placed some uh, in the segment of 2.4, 2.5 ton. I2 will be in 2.8, 2.9 ton and 3 ton and above we have I3 and I4. So this will, uh, this is based on the customer needs, uh, especially the e-commerce sector and some of the market load applications where customer travel about 200 kilometers a day. So that's where uh, we will position. So it completes the entire gap you had in the medium or slightly in the higher segment, right? Yes, 2 to 3.5 now we have covered everything. What is the mileage promise in this new variant? So in this new variant, it uh, as of now, it gives about uh, 16 to 17 kilometers. Is there a sales target? Huh? What is the incremental volumes you're looking at with the new launches? <laughs> you're making me making it difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, so of course, uh, see, segment is growing. I mean, this year we've seen a phenomenal growth in the segment, which is growing at about 16%. So our share is growing, as I said, we are at 20.3 percent as of now. With these new launches, certainly it is going to work. Okay, but there are the issues related to chips and semiconductors are behind now. How it is or is it easing now? Or what is the situation? Because LCD was also one of the segments affected by the shortage, chip shortages. Actually, the word you use, easing, is the right one because I don't think we've seen the end of it yet. And uh, if I look at the first four months of this year our LCD sales would have been much higher if it had not been for those chip shortages. So yes, uh, the indications that we get from our vendors is that the situation is improving, but uh, we still need to come to the point where we can safely say that this is behind us. Just one question. Uh, you said you know, CNG is hitting the market soon now you're preparing the launch. But are you coming at a time CNG price are gone? Suddenly, you know, even the manufacturer also made a request uh, for some help because CNG prices have shot up in recent weeks. Uh, what, what, what do you have to say about this? I mean, is the timing is right, you think? Yeah, see, CNG prices has been fluctuating. Off late, it has gone quite high, but I feel that uh, because of the government policies and regulatory uh, regulations, it will be, uh, you know, mandatory. Like in Delhi, NCR, Ahmedabad, Pune, certain area, it has become mandatory and uh, infrastructural grows. A lot of private player has come in CNG. So, uh, our calculation is that uh, uh, if the price difference is about 20 rupees and above between diesel and CNG, this segment is going to pick up again. So that's why, and positioning is that uh, we have a low horsepower, one of the vehicle which is very successful, those CNG, and this will be now coming at higher horsepower, which will negotiate a lot of you know flyover, upgrade, up, uphill, etc. So that is the background. Thank you.
Bye. Subscribe to Vulcan Television. Please subscribe Vulcan Television. Are you also looking to cater to the uh, sub two ton segment? Is that a vacant area for Shukla? And also, any more product gaps in the small and light commercial vehicle space that you are looking to fill in the future? I think what I mentioned in my uh, speech as well, across the board for our trucks and for our buses, we want to make sure that we cater to every single segment. And. Uh, so, if your question is directly on sub 210 as well, I would say in due course of time we intend to fill up the whole segment. Of course, the yeah, and on the second question which you asked, uh, uh, between two to seven and a half, where we are present, uh, yes, there are product lineup is there to fill up the entire gap. And of course, the obvious question uh, with the electrification that is happening, roughly, you know, technically, when can we expect the ES? Uh, which I mentioned, within six months' time, we're looking at launching of the electric LCDs as well. Standing on that question, uh, given that the charging infrastructure is not complete in our country, do you think uh, the rollout will be uh, will take off? And uh, what will be the pricing compared to the uh, conventional fuel vehicles? In terms of the takeoff, I think. Uh, we do not see the LCD moving very fast in the electric version in retail. It'll be very much on a B2B basis, uh, and whether it's the logistics company, e-commerce companies. And uh, for them, you know, within their infrastructure, we will create the charging stations as well. So just like the buses, the vehicles will come back in the evening and will get charged up. As far as the pricing is concerned, I, I'd like to keep that on hold for the moment till we launch. But uh, I think the intention is to be competitive and to make sure that when you look at the total cost of ownership, it will be a very viable uh, product for the customer. Hi, question from Motor Manager. Uh, a couple of questions. One is uh, the service and program of the vehicle. 
And the second one is the labor service charges seems to be pretty high, is one complaint to which the operators keep telling us. What about the standardization of the service charge? Though it is not the dealer point. Uh, service interval at present it is 10,000 kilometer. And uh, though I, I know uh, what you are trying to, yes, we are working on increasing the service interval. So with the OBD2, which is getting implemented in uh, on 1st April 23, we will enhance the service interval. This is one. Second, your second question is on labor charges. Uh, we keep uh, uh, checking labor charges uh, and according to the market need, we keep altering that. Uh, the operator, you know, we have a schedule. Uh, we have a service schedule and uh, once customer comes to our dealership, there is a standard service schedule which is, as compared to market, uh, I would say is not uh, high as such. Uh, maybe if uh, you were talking about perception, uh, we will find out and we will work on this. But uh, as such, labor charges are highly competitive compared to other competition products in the market. And uh, second thing is, uh, if you look at uh, five year and older vehicle, five to six year and older vehicle, they generally go out for service, but there is no comparison between outside service and our service. So that is the intention. Safety feature in the, see first thing is that there is a, uh, we've done enough safety test in, in the vehicle, there's a frontal beam which protects the driver. There have been very unpleasant incidents in the past, but we have done uh, significant crash test and we came out uh, very uh, clearly on that norm. That is one. Second is uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know ergonomics and the gaps between steering and the driver, uh, the uh, pedal, uh, pedal gaps, etc. All has been considered and all the safety norms have been uh, taken care uh, very well while designing the vehicle. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it is one of the safest uh, LCV, I would say, uh, the kind of incidents which I have seen and uh, uh, no uh, driver or passenger has, has been hurt so far. Thank you, sir. Thank you.